Welcome to Portfolio Management Best Practices with Ring Central. My name's Brian. I'm a senior manager of product marketing here at Smartsheet out of our Bellevue office. Uh, and I work with our customers that are looking to scale their business processes for higher output, more people involved, and more enterprise platforms. First, let me cover some logistics. Uh, this session is being recorded for you and your colleagues to view at a later date. And there is a chat window if you have any questions over the course of our time here. This presentation may contain forward-looking statements and any trademarks in this presentation do not convey endorsement. So our goal today is to take an in-depth look at some of the project and portfolio management best practices that you've seen over the rest of this track, but in a real world application. In just a few minutes, I'll introduce Tim Shevlov for Ring Central. This session will primarily be a conversation between Tim and I about the planning, implementation, and learning cycles of building a project management office. For demos on Control Center 10,000 feet, which we'll talk a lot about during this session, check out some of the other sessions that are part of this track. We started the track with an overview of project and portfolio management concepts with Robin. I talked about the individual unit of your portfolio, the project, and how we want to architect that for portfolio reporting. AJ showed us how Control Center automates project creation based on a blueprint and adds programmatic elements like demand management and archiving. Natalie and Olin showed you how to build the right team for your projects in your portfolio using 10,000 feet. And finally, Melissa and Natalie showed you the quickest way to get all of these principles in place for your IT department with our Accelerator for IT PMO. So today, we'll take a look at the real world implementations of these concepts and practices. Tim Shevlov from Ring Central is here today to talk about how they do project and portfolio management with Smartsheet Control Center in 10,000 feet. Ring Central is a software as a service company that offers a unified experience for messaging, video, and phone, with the goal of bringing employees and customers closer together. Ring Central works across your devices, is easy to buy and to manage, and offers enterprise grade security. Ring Central has 400,000 plus customers and partners globally, and that's a growing number. Users love it because it's easy to use, and IT loves it because it's easy to manage and has quantifiable results. We use Ring Central here at Smartsheet, and I'm proud to have Tim from Ring Central here today. Tim, welcome to Engage 2020. Tell us a little bit about yourself, where you are in the world right now, and what do you do for Ring Central? Hey, Brian, thanks for having me. I'm currently working from home in Denver, Colorado. I work in professional services, and in professional services, I'm a program manager on our project management office team. Thank you for being here today again. Uh, let's dig into that a little bit. Like, tell us what your world looks like right now. Um, how is your team organized? What does a normal day look like? Um, and, and what does your year look like? How do you guys get work done? Yeah, so professional services focuses on the implementation and delivery of our services and products to our customers. The PMO team works within the professional services organization to improve, drive efficiencies, and ultimately maintain our excellence and delivery to our customers. Ring Central and professional services as well is going through a rapid growth phase right now. When I started here just over two and a half years ago, we had around 60 employees. And today we have nearly 400 in professional services and over 10 specialized teams that all focused on delivering to our customers. Currently we have about 1500 active projects, which is more than doubled in the past year, but really started accelerating in the past six to nine months. Currently all of our projects and employees are delivering everything remotely using a combination of cloud products. Our combination of cloud products really is allowing us to work from anywhere. So when I look at that, I'm looking at like a six or seven X growth, um, growth of the, the people involved with your PMO organization. Uh, you had to have put a lot of thought into what the organization looks like and who's responsible for what there. Uh, tell me a little bit about how that organization is organized. Yeah, so the PMO team really grew out of necessity with the growth in our organization. Before we had the PMO team, and in order to make improvements and you know work on those projects outside of the delivery, it was really whoever was available, you know, managers, supervisors, directors, but you know, rarely they had any time. So it ultimately led to this point where we needed a team of individuals to support the organization outside of you know the customer facing activities. So we started a year ago, like I mentioned, and at first there was just a couple of us. Uh, we were running true program management. We had a thousand problems to solve and we picked the top ones and decided to go out and achieve them. 
we were very, very successful early on, but we changed the way we did our delivery in the PMO team a lot. This coupled with we us doubling our team in early 2020 allowed us to take a different approach and the one that you see now on the screen. Um, we call these swim lanes and really what we've done is instead of everyone just being equal program managers and just going out and tackling separate projects, what we've done is aligned uh, individuals to specific swim lanes as we like to call it. So we're more focused and targeted in our delivery, allowing us to not step on each other's toes and really drive efficiency within the, our own team. So let me talk about what you see on the screen here and kind of what each person does. So we have someone for methodology, standards, and processes. Um, it starts with writing down the process documentation, process flows, diagrams for every level of user in our organization. But while we're doing that, obviously we have to drive our methodology and standards that professional services and the larger Ring Central organization has embodied. From here, we have a dedicated trainer and it is a full-time job. It's not just focused on project management, but really training across the whole organization, across all facets. So we have new products, new services, product updates, new processes within Ring Central, professional services. Uh, a lot's changing constantly and it really takes a full-time job to educate everyone at the appropriate level. We also have someone dedicated to knowledge management and also I like to say communications. So once we get all those processes written, you know, where do we go find them and how do we know about them? Um, for us, this was a big pain point we had before. Although we all knew what we were doing, maybe it wasn't all written down because when you're a small organization, it's easy to train one new person up. But when you're hiring like 12 at a time, you know, it's, it's hard to train that many. So having a place to find everything uh, is crucial as well as having a single voice. Um, since we're making so many constant improvements and changes, we also wanted to make sure we had one voice for all the PMO. So this allows us to not send too many emails, be too burdenous with too much change and too many improvements on our user base. We also have a dedicated business analyst focused on metrics, reporting, and KPIs. And you'll hear me talk a lot about data throughout this presentation, but this is really a newer facet for us and allowing us to see some visualizations and reports and stuff we may have not been able to see before with our previous solution. And then we have PS Tools, which is my swim lane. And this really is focused on the technology behind the organization. What are we using every day to get our jobs done? Um, what are the integrations, the applications, Smartsheet uh, to do our jobs? Are we doing them the best? Can we improve them? What do we need to make us better? Across the top is strategic alignment and everyone in the team embodies this, but more closely, our manager and director talk to our VP to make sure that we're aligned with the larger professional services, as well as the Ring Central company as a whole. Very cool. And I love that you guys have taken that concept of uh, at the project management level, everyone has certain things that they are responsible for, and they often are responsible for a certain type of thing. You guys are taking that up to the organization level, that portfolio level, really applying those best practices. Awesome to see. Uh, but we know that no team ever starts like this, right? You guys are in a really good place, but that process and those owners weren't always so well-defined in, in no organization, at least in my experience, ever has that kind of visibility and planning cycles early on. So if you could uh, tell us a little bit about the, the story of, of how you guys got here with your organization and, and how you came to Smartsheet at 10,000 feet. Yeah, so I love to start this out with a coach with a quote by coach John Wooden. And it goes, if you don't have time to do it right, when will you have time to do it over? I love this quote. And one of my coworkers uses it often. I think it really sums up as to where we were at before this journey. Uh, before we had bought a tool that was just project management and time tracking, and it really didn't solve all our needs. But we were also 60 people at the time. So we thought buying one tool, it'll solve all our problems. And we'll just keep adding to it as we go. And that's what we did. We had a tool that we used for everything. We tried to engineer, and I use air quotes because I'm not one and I don't want to offend any engineers out there, uh, solutions that would work for the organization. But ultimately, you know, we were limited with functionality, tools in general, did the best with what we had, and it ultimately led us to a breaking point. So you know, we decided to take a step back and figure out what was the way to do it right. Um, some of the pain points we had in the, in the tool, even though we just bought it originally for project management and time tracking, was the project management component. 
it didn't have your traditional grid or spreadsheet style interface. And that was not very, you know, recognized by the user base. And it ultimately led to poor adoption and poor adoption led to lack of data. And it's obviously a compounding problem. So we ultimately needed to dig out of that one. We also didn't really use our resource management tool. Um, our previous tool had it. We didn't solve for it on the original solution. We probably could have you know, worked something out as we grew, but for us, coupled with all the other problems and you know, just what was going on in the organization, we decided it was time for you know, a clean slate. Let's start over and do it right. And I want to come back to that adoption component because I think there's some awesome stuff that your organization has done. Uh, to increase adoption of the methodologies and tools that, that you guys have put in place. Uh, but I will also want to get to what I know the audience is here and interested to talk about is what your actual workflow looks like across these products. And, and Tim, I need to speak up for you and your organization here. I got a wonderfully detailed, really, really cool diagram that if you're you know, really into processes like someone that works at Smartsheet is, uh, I thought it was really, really cool. Uh, please forgive me. I have... Uh, toned down that detail quite a bit. We've got a, a architecture flow, but, but tell us a little bit about um, what's going on uh, with the various teams here and what that workflow looks like. Absolutely. So as you mentioned, and as the pre presentation indicates, uh, we're using Control Center for our portfolio management, coupled with 10,000 feet and the other automations and workflows that Smartsheet has to offer. So on the left-hand side, you'll see we actually have two blueprints and we decided we needed to because we have accounts and projects and not everything for us is just a linear project. We have accounts that come in with multiple simultaneous projects. We have repeat business and it's never just a one and done. So we felt like we needed to kind of have two different levels of this solution. One's the, the project day-to-day -day stuff, but then the accounts at one step up from that. And I'll talk about more of both of those in a minute here. But basically, as you can see, it starts <laughs> with our integration to our Salesforce uh, CRM system. We're using the Smartsheet connector to Salesforce out of the box, and that is mapping into an equivalent intake sheet for both the project and account blueprints. On the account side, basically, once we get a new account that's unique, it will go into our account intake sheet. And in that sheet, we have some checks and balances to say, you know, is this a unique account? And it always should be, but you know, sometimes we have issues with Salesforce and whatnot. And from here, uh, the account will actually be automatically created. So there is no manual intervention in this process. The account is sold, it comes in the Smartsheet, Control Center does its thing, and it creates a workspace for the account. And I'll talk about that more in a minute here. On the project side, we actually want some more manual intervention here. Um, we, we do some stuff before the project gets going, and we wanna make sure that we have eyes on it. We're doing some validation and checks before we actually just go spinning up that project. So for us, what that looks like is once a project comes in and is sold and meets our criteria in our filter, it hits the sheet and we have a group of basically PM managers that start doing assignment. For us, uh, we call the PMs our CEO of our projects and they're ultimately responsible for everything that happens from the time of assignment till the time we're done with that project. So it's important for us upfront to make sure we start with the most appropriate resource. And that's why we really have this manual uh, intervention in the first step of our solution. So basically we get information from Salesforce and we're looking at size of account, uh, what segment, what region, uh, and some other data points to ultimately determine what type of you know, resource we need to assign. We also use 10,000 feet to see you know, who's working on what, when we have projects closing, but are also using uh, some skill sets, roles, and disciplines to determine the best fit for that resource for that project. It ultimately results in the project manager being assigned. And once they do, Control Center will spin up a project instance for us. For us, a project is a, a folder with some artifacts inside of it that lives inside of our account or workspace. Um, from here, now the, the PM's assigned, we got our project set up and we're ready to rock and roll. Um, the PM will start their initiation process and one quick step for them is to, to connect that project to 10,000 feet. Basically, they're taking a, a couple of quick clicks and it's creating a one-for-one -one project in our time tracking and resource management tool, 10,000 feet. Now we're off and running and really we're living in that kind of project 
workspace or project area, maintaining our project plan, we got a raid log, et cetera, et cetera, ultimately to the conclusion of the project. Finally, when the project's done, we are also using the control center archiving functionality to allow us to easily archive projects, which does two things really. It finalizes the data so we know what it was when it closed. And also it just helps clean up the user's workspace a little bit. You know, instead of having all these accounts and projects, they only have their active ones. We're also doing a little bit of portfolio reporting, um, but I'll touch up about more on that here in a second. Cool, very cool to see um, a lot of the elements that we talked about earlier in the track around demand management, the resource management side, a lot of that portfolio level stuff. Uh, what I'd really like to do is click down into what is in some of those elements of the, the workflow there. Because if I understand this correctly, we've got an account level, we've got a project level, and then we've got all of this stuff that gets aggregated out to our professional services reporting. Um, so walk me through kind of each of those altitudes. You know, what are the smart sheet components in there and what do you do with them? Yeah, and I think altitude is a great word to use, Brian, because it's definitely different views, different experience for different resources for the information that they need to do their job, right? So I'll start with the account. Uh, I mentioned the account was really, I like to call it a container for everything else. We may have some account level, level documents and dashboards, but it also is a container for the projects. So for us, uh, an account is a workspace with dashboards in it and key uh, reports that roll up information at lower levels. This is a newer view for us and something we didn't have with our previous tool. I mentioned we were pretty linear before and everything was just project, 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 but sometimes it doesn't allow you to see the full picture or it's burdenous to just look at projects individually when you're managing multiple for the same customer at the same time. So I like to think of this as more of our program manager view um, it shows us the key data points for all of our projects um, that we need. And then, you know, if we needed to dive down deeper, say I got a question about that one project, I only have a few data points on this screen. We drill down into the subsequent documents that we need if we need to go into more details on those subjects. Next, uh, on the project level, so one level down from that is really where we're doing the crux of the work. This is our day to day for most of our end users. I would say the two key components is our dashboard and our project plan. And the dashboard I love because we really went into this trying to design it as a one-stop shop for every conversation with our resources and the customer. So ideally every week when we have our call or how many times you're meeting, we pull this dashboard up. It's got stats about how many projects are, or how many tasks are completed. What do we have coming up? What's past due? What's our raid log look like? All this stuff is just on one screen. So, so all the even customer it, facing your customer and your, your implementers are talking together and looking at the dashboard status of their projects. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. awesome. Yeah. Uh, we don't want anyone to be blind. So, you know, if a customer sees something they're maybe not sure of or uncomfortable with, we want them to call it out and vice versa. So we want to be transparent in our delivery and showing them everything that's going on and, you know, call out any issues that we see that, that there might be. Mm -hmm. Um, so this coupled with the project plan, obviously a key to any project manager's, uh, tool set. And we have some other subsequent, um, reports, documents, stuff that help build up the, the dashboard and ultimately that customer experience. One level up from both the project and account is, is the professional services portfolio. And this is where we're really doing kind of our org level reporting dashboards. This is where we're giving information that you know, we can make decisions on. So we have individual manager dashboards um, for, you know, I'm managing PMs, I'm managing engineers. What are they doing? What do I need to look at? What do I need to update? Um, we have an organizational portal um, that is one-stop shop again for the entire org um, with reports, forms, links, um, links to our knowledge management system that has a dedicated page for Smartsheet. Um, trying to really just streamline everything into one place as much as possible. Mm -hmm. We also do some kind of dashboards and roll-ups for our financials so we can report to our executives and kind of where we're at as far as closing projects for a given month or quarter. And then we're also doing some lessons learned roll-up, which is a newer functionality that we're just kind of rolling out, but something we're excited to start seeing the results from. 
And then finally, the last one on here, uh, my favorite is the PMO is actually using it for um, internal requests, um, kind of portfolio management for our own team. You know, mm -hmm. so what are all these big projects we need to work on, the smaller ones, um, helping us intake, prioritize, and hopefully deliver on all of them. What I think is really cool to see here is that you guys have built different altitude dashboards for the different people in the different levels of, of your work. Even at the project level, you've got a handful of people and it's really cool to see that you're interacting with the customers on that dashboard. There's a different, there's a group of people there that are a different group of people with a different set of numbers that the account team looks at every day. And that's a different group of people and a different set of numbers than the professional services organization looks at every day. And because Smartsheet is pretty flexible, you guys can build as many dashboards as you need and you can provide those views for those different people. So really cool to see you tailoring uh, both to the needs of your customer, but also the needs of the folks that are working on these accounts and in these organizations. Keeps everybody happy. I want to dig in on resource management and time tracking a little bit. This seems to be one of those topics that is kind of next level maturity in an organization. When we moved on to resource management, like we're really doing the PMO thing. Uh, and it sounds like you guys are implementing that pretty successfully. Uh, I'd love to hear a little bit about, um, you know, what hurt here? How did you get to this point and say, you know what, it's this is the breaking point. It's time to make that jump into re resource management. And then what you guys are doing with time tracking and why that's valuable to your organization. Absolutely. So I mentioned in our old tool, we really just had time tracking our actuals and we didn't really get to using the resource management. So this is definitely a new experience for us and we're getting a lot of great data out of it. Um, before really, sadly, our, our assignment process was who's got the least projects, which is not necessarily great because it's just one metric out of many that you could use for assignment. Um, if we had too many projects and we usually do, because like I mentioned, we're in a growth mode, that quickly turns into who wants to volunteer for this project. So obviously we're not using data to intelligently assign people. It's just who's got bandwidth, who wants to, to take this. So that's where we were before. Um, obviously we've taken a step up from there mm -hmm. and we're currently using uh, you know, Smartsheet in couple with 10,000 feet to do all of our resource allocation, forecasting, et cetera. Um, we have the entire organization in it. Um, they're you know, tracking their time. They're forecasting how much they're working on a project and changing it over time. And this coupled with also a skill set matrix that we implemented using people custom tags in 10,000 feet is really giving us the best fit resource. So between discipline, role, and skill set, and you know, bandwidth and allocation, <laughs> hopefully we're assigning the most appropriate resource for that project and we're not taking our most skilled person and giving them the smallest projects and vice versa. We're also taking this a one, one step further and we are pushing all of our data from 10,000 feet into Tableau so we can get some even better visualizations and data that we can make actionable decisions on for the organization. And really interesting to hear you say that kind of like, who's got the least amount of projects? And in my experience, there's two types of people there. There are those that are going to kind of avert eye contact, like we're in high school math class again. And then there's the people that are going to jump in and take on too much work, which is a stressful situation for them. Uh, and ultimately, like sometimes they don't end up getting it done. So that's a great application of these kind of tools to get the right people with the right bandwidth onto those right projects. You mentioned Tableau, um, really awesome integrations with Smartsheet, with 10K, or with 10,000 feet. Um, the visualizations are beautiful. It's a cool partnership. Tell us a little bit about the work that you guys are doing there. Like what type of data goes into Tableau and, and what type of people are interacting with that data over there? Yeah, so Tableau, Tableau is also a newer tool for us. We just started really using it in parallel as we uh, move to Smartsheet because our larger, larger Ring Central organization is using Tableau. Um, let me tell you what we're not using it for first because we are doing a lot of stuff in Smartsheet, but there's, again, altitude's a great word. There's the appropriate place for the appropriate resources. Mm -hmm. So I mentioned, you know, kind of the day-to-day -day users. So that would be like a project dashboard. In Smartsheet, we're obviously using dashboards for that. If I'm in there all day, I'm writing project plans, I'm updating information, I'm not gonna make them go to an external source to go give me updates, right? So we have the project level, account level, kind of your end user dashboards and stuff and, and reporting that we use. 
Um, and then I also mentioned, you know, the manager level. So those that are always in Smartsheet and using it, they're, they're always there. Um, and then the PS portal, I mean, I can go on. We, we use plenty of dashboards in Smartsheet, but it may not be always appropriate like we talked about. You know, there's different altitudes. So what are we using Tableau for? Really, it's one level up from that. So who's not in Smartsheet every day? You know, who, who are those VPs, executives, C -suite, yeah, if I can say it, C-suite folks that are maybe just need to see the data real quick, maybe have a quick discussion, see those visuals and make a decision more rapidly instead of taking time to sift, digest, and look at more of the raw data. So that's when we use Tableau to really kind of build these more robust and, you know, uh, visualizations that Tableau can do. A um, couple examples to give you is uh, utilization. So I, I just talked about using 10,000 feet and putting that data into Tableau. Um, this is allowing us to kind of do some organizational aggregation and see what are our trending patterns. So for utilization, it's, you know, where's our time being spent? Is it spent being productive, productive and, fa and billable facing the customer? Or is it just admin time? Like, do we just have this admin task that's everyone's taking an hour to do every week and maybe it's not the most useful thing to us. We just put it in place because we thought it was best at the time, but now looking at the data, we'd rather give that hour back to some folks so they can focus on their projects and have more time with the customer in their day. So that's one example. Um, another great one along those lines is cycle time. So we're capturing key milestones and data points throughout our project plans across our projects. With this, it allows us to look at overall start to finish time but also those unit times of the milestone. So how long did it take to do data collection? How long did it take us to implement? And with this and being able to visualize it in Tableau, it again allows us to see those trending patterns or outliers and take a look at it and just see, you know, what's going on? Why is this number so much higher than all the others? What can we do to improve that? You know, what can we do to reduce that start to finish time? And ultimately, what we're after, right? We always want to deliver the best solution, but also in the most efficient way possible. Mm -hmm. So very much applying that kind of concept of like, if we're measuring it, we're going to see things that we wouldn't otherwise, if we weren't paying attention to it and identifying process improvements. I love that you guys always seem like you're pursuing some new way to, to shorten cycle times, improve the match of people that are on your projects, uh, just improve the quality of experience for your customers. Let's talk a little bit about timing so far? Because as I'm looking at this, um, you guys have a pretty um, robust implementation. Um, you've got a lot of systems that were put in place and you've got a lot of people that you brought along for this ride. Uh, and, and we all know that putting the best systems in place, the best processes in place, even the best leadership in place doesn't really matter if you don't get everyone to come with you on that journey. It's one thing for you guys to pick the tool and say, hey, this is how we're going to use it. It's a totally other thing to get those 400 implementers and project managers and stakeholders onto that model that you guys have built for everybody. Uh, you told me about some of the unique ways that you got everybody on board and I loved um, some of the kind of normal standard approaches and some of the creative stuff. So tell me a little bit about um, how you went implementing this and how you got everyone else on board. Yeah, I couldn't agree more on the adoption piece. And I think that's really was the, although it was the start of our, our last project was the beginning of the end for our old tool because we, we didn't do great adoption and it didn't start well. And then it just kind of compounded from there. So we knew this time around, we really had to knock it out of the park. And I'm so proud to tell this part of the story. Um, if I could just read off a couple of stats here. So yeah, cool. We had five months to implement this project from the day the Smartsheet Professional Services team was assigned to the day that our contract expired on our old tool. So it was getting shut off and we were told we have to get it done by that date. We actually got it done in four months somehow. <laughs> um, two months into the project, all of our offices shut down and we had to transition to meet our new normal, which resulted in 100% of our user base was remote throughout the entire duration of our transition. So not necessarily when we were doing the planning and design, but from the time that they were starting to get communications and introduction to the new tools and systems to the, well, till today, because we're still all working remotely. Mm -hmm. um, to read those stats feels awesome because I was living in it day to day and sometimes you, you don't see what you've done, but I'm really proud of my team and what we achieved for this user adoption. Uh, speaking to it more specifically, we, it really started 
And we were fortunate enough to have uh, one project right before this, after we had the larger team, the new PMO team with more people in it and our specialized swim lanes. Um, it was for an internal tool that we were developing for professional services. And we weren't as close to the implementation like we were for this and leading it, but we did have to assist with training, adoption, process, everything else that goes into a rollout for end user adoption. Uh, it was quickly after we formed the new team, so we had to learn quick. And although we had all these you know, specialized individual swim lanes, which allowed us to focus on what we needed, it was more of the cohesion of all working together as a brand new team and figuring out how are we going to make this all work for 400 people? It's not, it's not easy stuff, right? So uh, it started out with really just a brain dump. You know, I was the lead on this. I was day, every day, smart sheet every, was what I lived and breathed. And some of the other resources, you know, knew what was going on, but they had no idea what the solution was. So, you know, it starts with just brain dumping everything out of my head to them. Um, we all sat down one day for probably half a day and I just talked and talked and talked and the trainer, the knowledge management person, the process person, I feel bad for them, but they all had to listen to me talk for half a day and really was just typing things on a sheet of paper. Like, what do we have to do to get this done? Well, there's the, the intro training. Yeah, but there's that, but then there's like three different levels of that. And then we got to break it out and, and space it. It was a lot at first and I was really overwhelmed and I was freaking out. I didn't know how we were going to get this done. But thankfully, you know, the team rallied behind, behind me and we have these individual lanes where we're allowed to kind of go conquer our own individual areas. So it really started with communication. And I'll say the communication is 100% the most important thing. Uh, as soon as we had kind of our plan in place, because we didn't want to communicate too early, we decided to you know let the user base know, hey, we're moving to Smartsheet. So this started about two and a half, three months out from a go live. And from then on, every week, we would send at least one to two communications. And this is all planned before we sent the first one, just saying, hey, here's what's coming. Hey, here's something new for you to learn. Hey, can you please set up your profile? Little mm -hmm. stuff, just peppering it in along the way. So everyone's not just, hey, here's our entire new solution, learn it, see ya, right? So we had to find a way that was nice and paced and you know, met all audiences. So it started with communication and then really documentation was our next big undertaking. Um, every process, everything that we did essentially was changing and was going into the new tool. So we had to rewrite everything and some of it maybe didn't exist yet. You know, we had just known how to do things before. So some of it was net new. We had, I think at least 20 or 25 different processes created just for the solution. So that was a lot of effort just writing stuff down, right? And then training was awesome. Um, we actually split this into two different ways and let the experts do what they do best. So for Smartsheet, we let the Smartsheet professional services team train us on kind of those core product fundamentals. You know, what does that look and feel? What are the key terms and functionalities within both Smartsheet and 10,000 feet? And that really allowed us to, you know, train on what we're the experts of. And that's the specific processes within our solution and what Ring Central and PS is using Smartsheet for. And I think it went really well. Uh, we ended up having 19 classes with 838 attendees. So lots of training and adoption there. And then on my last two favorite things I want to talk about is some fun stuff and support. So fun stuff, you know, we got to make it exciting. I mean, it's a lot to learn. It's burdenous no matter how you break it down. So we did two things and we were hoping to do all the stuff in office, but obviously things changed. So we had to get, you know, clever on how to make it fun still. So it started with onboarding when you're going in and setting up your profile, your credentials, et cetera, et cetera. We actually created a little contest where once your profiles were set up in both Smartsheet and 10,000 feet, send us a screenshot to prove that you set your profile up and uploaded your picture. And we put everybody in a raffle to win some free swag. So that was just an intro to get everybody you know, ready for what was coming in the next month. Um, we also had, I had planned on doing a scavenger hunt in the office, but obviously we couldn't go back to the office. So um, instead of having a little scavenger hunt, what we did was turn it into an educational quiz using the form functionality. And we got a bunch of submissions and ended up having to just pick the, you know, randomly the top 15 to send some more swag to. So uh, everyone got some, you know, free stuff. We try to make it a little fun. So it's not just, 
you know, the most basic and boring user adoption. Uh, and then finally, uh, I think what really spoke to our success is how we supported the organization. So I had visions throughout this whole project and I was so excited for Go Live Day. You know, I'm a project manager remote for most of my career and rarely do I get to go on site for Go Lives with customers, right? So now that we have our first big internal project and we got this Go Live, I could not wait to just be running around like a madman on the floor, just seeing who needs help and really supporting folks. Um, so I was really amped for that. And I was pretty bummed that we, we didn't get to all experience it together. And I was kind of concerned, like, how do you support 400 people when you can't see them and, you know, see what they're seeing and let's jump on a screen share is, you know, is that going to work? Um, so two things that we did, that I think we were extremely successful on is the first one was setting up a support channel, a chat channel. So we used the Ring Central application and created a team inside of it with all of our user base. We started this out a few weeks before go live uh, to make sure any questions from training, you know, questions on what was coming uh, for the transitional period, we get them early. So it wasn't just a fire hose all at once on the day of go live. So we started a few weeks before go live and it's actually still running today and we have no plans on discontinuing it. Um, it's a great way for everyone to just get their questions into us. Maybe I'm not free at that second, but my team is, or, you know, whoever is available and sees that there's a question in there, they'll jump in and triage it right away. And then finally we had a support forum. So this also started one week before go live. And what this was is a twice a week, hour long call that we just, I opened up the bridge and said, please join. If you need mm -hmm. anything at all, you got questions, you're just not sure, whatever it may be just chime in and let's take care of it on the spot because guarantee you there's other users having the exact same questions and let's all just look at it together. So we started that a week before our go live and ran it for six weeks. Um, the first week or two we had, I think 60 plus people joining every meeting because a lot going on at once people are you know concerned and they just want to make sure they know everything, everything's going right. Um, by the last week or even two, I think we just had a handful of people and they're really just there to listen to see if anybody came on and asked questions. So I feel like we really, you know, got over our challenges that we had at first, the adoption issues and, you know, just new systems really quickly. And we're able to move on and start just continuing the improvement of our solution. Totally. There's, there's three really cool things I see about this story, you know, from a PMO standpoint, there's very clear like discovery, planning, communication, implementation, post-implementation, uh, stages. Of course, makes sense. That's what you guys do, you're professionals. Uh, not only that, but to be successful in four months instead of five, which I'm an English major, not a math guy, but I think that's a 20% better than the goal. Um, that's really something that, that you guys can be proud of. And that's, you know, that's the first thing I see. Then I see that you've done this really cool thing uh, where you've met your stakeholders where they are. Uh, if they don't have smart sheet experience, great, let's get them some training. I'm sure you guys would do that on any other service that you guys implemented. If they prefer to talk to you through the Ring Central app and kind of that typical asynchronous communication that we see a lot of now, that's great. You can meet us there and we can help you there. If you want to go to uh, like an office hours call is kind of what I'm envisioning there. Great. We'll be on the phone. We're waiting for you two hours a week. And if you want to just lurk in that call and hear other people ask what you know your question is probably going to be, that's great. So there's a very human element to your PMO work there that I think is amazing. And then to do all of this while we are working remotely without the ability to go over to your colleague's desk and help them with that, uh, to have all of us dealing with all the other challenges that we are facing with our technology in the workplace right now, but also to roll out entirely new programs and processes. Um, please take our congratulations back to your team when, when you leave here. I think that's, that's really an accomplishment. So we, we've gotten the sense that you guys don't sit still very well, right? You're constantly looking for ways that um, you can grow and do better things for your customers and do better for your organization. What are those things that are next on your list to look into? Yeah, so continuous improvement is the short of it. Uh, just because we went live with a brand new solution and you know we, we built a great one and really planned it, tested it, got feedback, doesn't mean we're done. You know, um, some things that we had planned at first didn't work out 100%. They're great solutions, but in practice, we need to tweak them a bit. So there's one or two processes that we've adjusted since Go Live, and it's continuous evaluation of, 
Are we doing things right? Can we be doing things better? But obviously, as you mentioned, we're always doing that. Um, the implementation actually highlighted a lot of other issues that we had. Uh, we thought we had some, you know, better integrity in some other systems, but, and, you know, our, the tool we replaced was the crux of it, but it actually highlighted some other issues with some of our integrations with other tools that we're going to need to improve. And that's really our next projects. Um, and outside of that, you know, just fixing what we have already, just looking to build out and expand the solution even further. So, you know, how can we add other integrations for other departments that aren't maybe direct PS that we interface with to make everything a little bit more seamless between our organizations and again, driving more efficiency throughout the whole organization. I, I love that comment about highlighting challenges in other areas of the business. You know, when you think about it, our organizations are big living, breathing organisms, right? And all these systems interact and when you strengthen one side over here, you find that there's something else to work on. It's awesome that you guys are identifying that kind of stuff and pursuing it. So Tim, we're coming to uh, the end of our time here. Really want to thank you for being here. Uh, for our audience, if you want to learn more about Ring Central, they're at ringcentral.com. We've got links on your screen there to learn more about Control Center in 10,000 feet. We've also opened up a, a Control Center community. Uh, I'm in there. A lot of other folks that I work with and a lot of customers that I work with are there. Uh, you can come in. You can ask your questions to other folks that are trying to do things like what you're trying to do. Uh, if you've got best practices, you know, maybe on these uh, products, maybe just on project or portfolio management itself, come in and you share your knowledge. We'd love to have you there. Uh, and there are brain boost activities there on your screen for you to follow. We'll be on chat for a little bit. I uh, want to thank Tim Shevlove from Ring Central and want to thank all of you guys for being here with us today.